You're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch 22 radio show on 92kills.com. Yeah, and we are back. Um, I wish y'all can hear these off air conversations that we have uh, because these guys are delusional. Um, we have a special guest in the building. Um, we just heard his one of his songs before we just came in, before you heard the instrumental. Yeah. Um, and it is Toy Brandon. Yo, what's poppin'? <laughs> All right, Toy, you're going to have to speak up. You know what I mean? I know okay, you're cool. I got you, you, I know, got you know, you. rappers are real cool, but you got to <laughs> speak up. Yeah, I'm going to speak up. I got you. <laughs> All right, so Toy Brandon, uh, give people like a little, a little quick bio of like where you from, you know, who you are, things like that. See, my name Toy Brandon. You're I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, I just moved out here to Houston about a year ago. Um, shoot, man, I just make dope music, man. I got all type of different melodies and things I be doing, you know, just out here trying to chase that dream. You dig? I feel you. What got you here from Baton Rouge, man? What made you come all the way to Houston? For y'all? more opportunities think so? yeah you gotta get out your city to grow yep. and, mm. and everybody in my city know me so it's they don't want to support it because they know me but but right now i got them looking now they like oh oh it's getting big it's getting big so now they jumping on a bandwagon and see when i go home it's all love see it's crazy because it seemed like fredo came here and felt like young boys here for a while you know who's come through here frequently gates too gates why y'all boys feel like Houston is the way to go and not running like, like, to It's next door, yeah. It's really next door. Yeah. Eight hours away from uh, Atlanta, from Baton Rouge. It's yeah. four hours away from Houston. Oh, okay. okay. So you can still go, I can still go back at home, still promote, and come back to Houston, you know what I'm saying? I'm safe, I'm good. So that's how I look at it. Any BR artists out there that you fool with or you like them? It's a lot of them. Uh, really a lot of them um i used to throw my own shows i used to put a lot of artists on and i know a lot of talented artists out there you, you know. bringing them out this way though <laughs> when i can when i get there okay. so right now i got to focus on me until i get where i'm trying to go then i might put you know pull who who been rocking with me since day one pull on me so are you trying to stay independent and grind like a like a um like a Bootsy or or Yo Gotti, or are you trying to go major? Um, I really want to go major. I just want to be heard, man. I just want to be comfortable with my living, you know, take care of my fam, and just do live my dream. I really, I would sign a deal, but it would have to be a right deal to like, I, I have the leverage to, I'm gonna shop around, and yeah, we gonna. We're going to make it happen how I want it to make it happen. It's not going to be the, they come and approach me about this, how I want it to happen. Yeah, you know, they say that a lot of Southern rappers live off the Chitlin circuit, which is very lucrative. Um, you know, when Duval, Lil Duval Barkley broke it down, he was like, there's a lot of more, it's a lot more small towns than it is major cities. Right. So if you hit the, ma- like the small towns more than the major cities, you, you can, your longevity is better. So is there any artists like right now that you would love to work with? Uh, a lot of uh, you talking about like in the small towns, or you talking about period? Period. Yeah, period. Oh yeah, really? It'd be like J Cole, um, Jay Z. Um, shoot, man, it's really mostly lyric artists, man. I like I like people that's talking about something, not just uh, rapping about that shooter, shooter, murder, murder, bang, bang stuff right now. So that was type of artist I listen to. So do you feel like that's like kind of like a conflict from where you're from? Because I mean, based on the artists artists that come from Baton Rouge, Rouge. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. what oh, yeah. they own. Oh yeah, that's what they own. But <laughs> you got these other artists that's on something different. You know, we talking about positive stuff. We talking about elevating in life. So, um, you know, they got people listening, but you know, in BR, they just, we everybody got that mindset of being a gangster. So it's, right. <laughs> it's a little different when you trying to transition them to Hey man, y'all need to be. You need to be on this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So. so the track that we played right before we came into the interview, what was the name of it? Oh, uh, that was called Time Zone. Okay, so Time Zone. It seemed like more of a light skin song, and you know you're a dark skin <laughs> dude. So I'm trying uh, to figure out like what, really, what put you in your feelings man, to write that, that song. That was one of those songs about an ex a long time ago. It took me like two years just to write that song before I even expressed my feelings. About was she light skin? 
Nah, she was about my color. Uh, little, she was a little lighter. Chocolate she was a, lit. She oh was man, lit. devil. That's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's the devil, man. <laughs> All right, man. Well, tell me about DMG. Is that your thing, or? Yeah, that's the record label, Dope Music Group. Okay, so you, know. you run it by yourself, or nah, you got a team behind yeah, it? Yeah, I have a team behind it. Um, okay. My manager, um, my president, Rico, and uh, I got the A&R um, Spank. So, like, yeah, we doing our thing. Okay, so y'all looking for up and coming artists to come to, to sign, or? Um, in the future. Right now, we still trying to build it to where we want it to be, and then we're going to branch out. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, okay, so how, how important is social media to you, man? You social I'm still media? learning it. Like, it's, it's a lot to learn to try to get people attention. Um, so, like, right now, we're just planning on how to get more content, how to market it better, and, you know, we're we making a way. <laughs> I, hear you, I, hear you, I hear you. I see you keep your vape with you. Are you in the vape life? Or? Yeah, man. I, I, don't smoke, I don't smoke weed, so... <laughs> Well, nothing but you say all you do is puffing on the vape. That's that's for right now. It's I I can't smoke weed again right now. I can't. Oh, oh, oh the so folks I, won't let you smoke weed. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, we had somebody I'm in, a position in the room. I can't weak. smoke weed. Just, well, that's all it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had somebody in the room in that same position. We ain't gonna point no fingers. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's how that I couldn't mean. partake in. Now that he can, he's overindulging. But we'll talk about that. It's an intervention. So the best question, how long has it been since you were able to smoke? And does that mess with your music? Because a lot of people in their creativity. Um, a long time it messed with my music because I had to readjust how to write music because I, I used to smoke and write. But once I had got in trouble and I couldn't I couldn't smoke no more, I had to drink, write, pump on the vape. Yeah, but it so wasn't the same. Was, nah, it wasn't. I had to really get in the mood of want to write. And it, it was a little different, but now I could do it. I just write sober. That's crazy. Okay. So My Time Is Coming is the name of the EP. Yes. Um, What made you stay to like the uh, like the, the shortness of the EP? It's what, six tracks? Yeah. So what made you say, like, I'm going to drop an EP instead of dropping a full project? Um, I like to drop it that way because uh, just people attention span. Um. And you'll turn, you'll you'll get out of the album quick if you got. They got about fifteen songs. I'm about to listen to only five. <laughs> this is true. I still ain't got through Chris Brown album, and it was fifty some songs. I'm not about to listen to all that. Uh-uh. that that's, 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 <laughs> that's too much. Not the same person, that's the same yeah. person. Yeah, 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 I'm not about to listen to all that. I'm about to give you a good little project that you could listen to, run it back about twice. You listen to the project twice, and you'd be like, "Oh man, that bit was dope. I need more." So, yeah. do you think that's where like music is going right now? That you have to have shorter projects? Um, yeah, just by the attention span. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go into a uh, quick little mix. Um, with DJ Anthrax, when we come back, we got more. DJ Long Nipples. <laughs> See, I was going to let you make it the whole show. I was going to call you <laughs> DJ Youth Pastor, DJ Long Nipples, DJ Nice Sweater, DJ Flakes for Beer. I wasn't going to call you none of that. I was going to let you make it. You got but... a lot of names, but you got to pick one to go to Instagram with. Oh. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to take a quick break, and then we come back. We got more with Toy Brandon. It's Catch-22 Radio, Man Cave style. Yeah. We are back. So we're going to go into more of the conversation off air with Toy Brandon. And we was talking about um, sleepers, bangers versus billboard hits, right? So would you, rather, would you rather have a sleeper or a banger or a billboard hit? Billboard hit all day, every day. Man, I could, if I get on a billboard hit, you can tell me at that point. Like, he kind of writes his own thing. Oh, yeah. I, I said like, the I'm same thing. I've been on the billboard before, and y'all don't know me. <laughs> you, you ain't never been on the billboard. Get out of here. Because if you've been on the billboards, you would still be banking the check. Yeah, but no, I, it was. Like, them, a, that's I, what I'm saying. I had an artist for real, for real, for real. For real. He, he featured on the song with this little chick called Harris. Maybe about like 2003. And they made it to the billboard for real. And I was just mad at that. It was only, I don't know if, if that was a situation of them pushing it a certain type of way or everywhere else because it wasn't known here, but it, apparently they said it was kind of everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it don't be played in your own city. You know what I mean? But, like, I get that there are classics that didn't hit the billboards, which is cool. But if you ask me as an artist which one I want more, like the masses to hear it or people to sleep on it, I want the masses to hear it. As an artist, I would think. I ain't thinking that. You know what I mean? Like, we, like... JT probably got countless, like, American Gangsta's probably his best project to me. To me, too. And it got slept on. It's a banger. Yeah. 
But I, I can't I can't say that it competes with Reasonable Doubt or Blueprint 2 when they clearly outsold. You know what I mean? Like, so it got set on Billboard wise, what you saying? Yeah, yeah it got so, set on Billboard wise. Well, singles wise. So Billboard is all he, about the singles anyway. Right. So well, let me ask you a question. With you being a lyrical artist, a lot of times lyrical artists have the hardest time when it comes to making singles. Yeah. So how do you feel like you can break into that to figure out how to do that? Um, right now I'm really working on it. Um, I'm playing with just different melodies with the people. So right. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to give them kind of what they want, but so put it in my person, you know, in my sound, um, just, just playing off of they, what, they, what they like. So that's what I'm doing right now. You know what I'm starting to learn is a lot of lyrical artists that like people would say like are really rappers, they just make music for women and women just tend to like it. That's the like easiest Fabulous, way to go. J. Cole, like they just make music for like that women can relate to. It seems like that's the easiest way to go. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because women, I mean, I mean I'm not going to post it. I'm just jamming your music. But it could be a bunch of women that's going to post that they listening to your music or dancing to your music. It's just what it is. So if you had to say what was your favorite, like, song on your project, like if, you, if I had to point somebody in a direction, um, what would you say is your favorite track and why is it your favorite track on your project? It might be Mission. Um, I listen to that a lot. Uh, it's just that I'm on a mission. I, I'm, what I'm talking about, I'm on a mission. I'm trying to get somewhere, and everybody's watching, but they're not mentioning. And it's like, you know, y'all see me, y'all see me on the come up. You see me doing this. When you see me in person, be like, hey, man, I see you. I see you doing your thing online, but you never liking or reposting, but you know me. And I'll be like, you know, I'm on a mission right now, and there ain't nobody mentioning. So that's, that's my favorite story. So do you feel like that's important that it's like to show support that people should like share and repost and really really gonna get to the point they gonna do it on their own. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting from people that they're they're doing it, but it's not as many as I want them. I feel like that should be doing it. So um, it's gonna get there when it gets there. You know? So do you feel like it's more people on the outside that's supporting than, than your inner circle, or you know? Because some people say like it's hard to get family and friends. To, to repost and answer the <laughs> family and friends. Man, I know somebody. My contacts, I have 800 contacts. I only talk to five people. But all these people, <laughs> all the, the the other people in my phone, <laughs> these are my friends and family, and they don't even support like that. Yeah, that's and that's crazy. crazy. I can't. I got 800 contacts, and they would not repost or uh, listen to my music. So let me ask you a question. So let me ask this: If somebody said they go five million dollars. Or here go your music career, but you don't get no money. Which way I'm trying? Ooh, uh, that's a catch twenty-two. Jeez. Five million dollars. Uh, well, I know it's my dream, but <laughs> five million dollars, bro. I'm about to, I'm about to that five mil. <laughs> Uh, I was about like, to say, hey, I'm man. about to get into real estate. I'm gonna show you, I'm about to, <laughs> I'm gonna show you what to do with that five mil right there. Yeah, I, 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 I can still live like a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gotta be one, but I can live like one. That's that is the most honest answer. <laughs> we probably ever Cause got people be like, oh yeah, I'm an artist and I love music. Yeah, exactly. I don't really need none of that. Like, if you offer me five million, say, hey, you gotta stop doing radio for five million dollars. Well, what? These mics. <laughs> keep these mics. What? You know, but a lot of times you have to try to judge between is it the love for the craft or is it the love or is it the fame and the money that you're going after? I, I really don't even like the fame. I don't like I don't like cameras on me like that. I don't like taking pictures. I don't. So how? I, really? How, how you gonna be in this industry without? I'm, it? I'm accepting it. I gotta get comfortable. It, it's all about getting comfortable. And like, you know, as as I'm growing, I'm getting comfortable with the stuff that we doing. Like I used to be nervous talking on radio shows. Now I'm I am cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you hear me? But really I'm just it gonna come with it. I gotta know what I'm getting myself into, so that's how I'm preparing. Yeah. Alright, so like when eventually like you're gonna be able to go to Walmart right. and do like regular stuff. Cause <laughs> you know what I mean? So how do you how do you feel like you'll deal with that amount of celebrity like like Drake can't go outside normal, no way. like normal people. Um, I think I'm gonna be one of them type of artists you can approach. I want to be one of them type of artists you can approach. I don't know. Yeah. You say that. I, I, I know. You. I know it would get aggravating, but I'm a calm guy. Like it, it, they're gonna be taking pictures. I right, cool. Uh, uh, go by my bed. Bro, you can't pee in you public. Know. Like, what? so you going to Walmart? You can't. 
I would go in Walmart if I'm famous. <laughs> I'm saying that you go in there and go pee dude over your shoulder want to talk and take pictures. You ain't gonna be able, you gonna forget what you went in there and bought. You know how you already go to Walmart now and forget what you're supposed to buy. You walk out there with a basket of stuff and you're only supposed to get some seasoning. But now you're gonna go in there and everybody named Mama gonna be trying to take pictures. You're gonna be like, dang, I walked out of there. I've been there three hours and ain't bought nothing. I ain't do nothing but take pictures. That's Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like the way he's thinking about it. They, right? they gonna have people like, who is that? <laughs> Come take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, it is a question I want to ask. So now that I, we're seeing, like, you know, like the, the effect that things he had on the coaching, the fact that, like, now everybody is getting into, like, back, giving back to the community, how important is it for Tory Brandy to give back to his community of that Boy. Alright, let me see. Let me see. Uh, that was a question. Yeah, that, that is a good question because I, I would give back, but. It would, it would have to be a good look for a good reason. Like, I would, it would be some stuff like, you, you know, like Trey Day do. Like, uh, you know, um, he brings new artists to come perform on his day. I would do something like that, you know what I'm saying, for the, uh, the upcoming artists. And have everybody out there, you know, support. So, that, that would be, it would be like a big support thing. Like, hey, let's all come together and... <laughs> yeah, more yeah, more yeah, like yeah. a festival type yeah, thing. Yeah, something like that. That'd be dope to have, have, have a day in the city where it's just, it's, it's fun. You know what I mean? Like, families can come out. Yeah. Um, Plus, they not just draw some money back in my life. Yeah, that's fine. Like, giving like. back money. I, I can't give back the money, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I give back time. <laughs> right? Yeah, I give back the money. I can. I, I mean, but your time and your celebrity I'm will make the money for, for, the, for the community. Right. You gotta know how to do it. Right. You don't yeah. necessarily have to always dig in your pocket. A lot of these celebrities don't dig in their pockets. They get a lot of stuff for free. Yeah, um, all right, Toy, look, I want to get into your song fast, man. Oh, we go. Bad life. Fast life. Yeah. It's my bad. I want to get this song fast life. So go ahead, put it, drop it for us real quick. We're going to go ahead and play it. We're going to get okay, out of here. Tell cool. the people where to reach you, where to find you. Go ahead. Well, cool. You can find me on all social medias at Toy Brandon Music, T O Y Brandon Music. And, man, this is my new single, Fast Life, man. It's, it's blowing up right now. Yeah. Bet. You're, you're now rocking with the I'm voice of the right. South. Catch, Catch 22 out. Radio Show on 92 kills.com. I'm just trying to say, baby. Yo, this your boy, Todd Brandon. I just wrapped up with Catch 22. Man, catch me on all platforms, all social media platforms at Toy Brandon Music. Just dropped a mixtape with an album called My Time Is Coming. Make sure you check that out. Yeah.